So I was watching some YouTube videos this morning about Greater Manchester Police. Um, and I've got to say there's some quite shocking ones and also some quite funny ones really. For example, I found a video by a user, I think he was called Pete Knight, which was uploaded just a few days ago, where he goes down to his local police station, I think it was Lee, and starts yelling from the outside at the police not to throw another grenade in, which is quite funny. And now, obviously, I don't know whether that's true or not, but it's quite an entertaining video. Then I found another YouTube video by a lady called Janaya, 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 um, not sure on the pronunciation, but she goes to a church opposite a GMP police station. I can't remember exactly which station, um, but it was definitely a Great Manchester police station, in order to make a video about suing GMP. And all she wanted to do was use that particular police station as a backdrop to her video, um, which is fair enough. And a police officer comes over to her and politely asks her what she's doing before agreeing that sh what she's doing is not illegal, disruptive, suspicious, so she can basically be left alone to carry on. Now that particular video has really got me thinking this morning, uh, well, earlier today, this morning, I was thinking about um, just really the concept of suspicious activity or, or suspicious items. Um, because one of my own previous experiences with Greater Manchester Police really concerned this. And what I've really been specifically thinking about today is sort of how we live in this society with this kind of, if you want to call it, a hierarchical overridence almost. So, in terms of opinions about how suspicious something might be, whether it's a behaviour or an entity, if it's a police officer that says something suspicious, it's highly logical that it's going to be acted upon in some way, probably investigated, purely on the basis that the law enforcing individual thinks that it's suspicious. But what if these tables are turned? Um, and the reason I'm mentioning this converse situation is because that really was my own experience with GMP, which I'll get into. Um, so if we flip this situation and we have a non-law enforcing normal civilian reporting something they think is suspicious, which is then dismissed by the officer. I mean, is that right? If we compare it to medical judgments, for example, as far as I'm aware, and I might be, might be wrong on this, I'm not certain, but as far as I'm aware, when something's questioned in the medical field, it's always standard practice to get a second opinion of a different doctor. Similarly, that patient being operated on would have the right to request a second opinion himself. And also, if we look at that situation analogously to both medical professionals and police officers being service providers, which is essentially what they are, well, it is what they are, and members of the public therefore being service users, it paints perhaps quite a different picture of how the two things, similar things, are handled in the two different fields. So perhaps there should be a discussion at some point about whether... Mm, Maybe where the police should be duty-bound in some way to seek a second opinion about something that's reported to them as suspicious under the circumstances that they don't think it's suspicious themselves. Which is really what happened with me. Um, and that thought kind of leads me on to my own experience of Greater Manchester Police Force. Um, regarding what I believed at the time and frankly would still believe today was a suspicious item. Um, so one of the things I like to do on Sundays is take my dog for a nice long walk in the countryside or a nice big park where I can let her off the lead without worrying about traffic. And last year, on Sunday the 9th of December it was, 2018, I was walking through Hawkshaw. Um, Hawkshaw is a lovely little rural feeling village just north of the big Manchester northern suburbs like uh, Bolton and Bury. Um, and it's lovely because it has a really rural feeling but it's not really that far from Manchester um, and it's brilliant for places like that in general really really nice to go for a nice long walk on a Sunday so Luna's off the lead in Hawkshaw walking ahead of me down this little muddy country path um, next to this brook and she suddenly uh, disappears behind this kind of giant pile of, uh, I can't quite remember whether it was mud or sand, but it was this giant pile of, I think it might have been sand, but anyway, um, she disappears behind it, 
and when I call her to come back she doesn't and barks instead which she does she's not really a barky dog so I walk around to the back of the pile to see why she's barking and there's that there's this battered open suitcase with just a few things in it um, and there's no one around it's really remote because we're in this kind of really raw location getting away from everyone um, and out of curiosity I just had a little rummage through it uh, just to see what was inside I took a few videos of everything that was inside as well I don't really know why I did that but now that I did it I'm glad that I did it and you'll kind of see by the end of the video why I'm glad that I did it um, so I'll get on to why exactly I thought this item was suspicious but if we skip forward to later that morning I came home, went to the police station to report it it's locked so I, I ring the bell and wait a few minutes but no one answers so fair enough maybe they don't work Sundays but as far as I'm aware the police is 24-7 so the next morning um, Monday the 10th of December 2018 I stop off at my local police station, the same one, on my way to work, and this time it's open. Go in there, and there's a PCSO standing near the door, just inside the station. She asks me if I'm okay, and basically I just politely tell her that I'd like to report a suspicious item. And at this point, she's like, suspicious, what is it? Like, quite... not rude, but, yeah, just a bit... kind of almost a tone that made me feel like she was doubting my genuity from the start um, and at this point to be honest I was kind of thinking I've come here to talk to a proper police officer not a PCSO um, and I don't disrespect PCSOs and the value of them by any means but I'd gone to report something that I felt was quite serious um, So, but of course I couldn't say to her face I want to talk to a proper police officer because they'll just see that as rude so I gave her a detailed description of the item, its contents, its location, and exactly why I thought it was suspicious, and then also showed her the videos on my phone. And when I'd finished doing this, I was literally amazed by her response. Um, she pretty much just told me, and do quote me on this, because I, have a, I made a, a secret audio recording of it, um, well if it's beeping or got wires hanging from it, then that would be classed as suspicious. What you've just described to me is a small case of fly tipping, which is a council problem, not a police matter. For, and then, I was just absolutely gobsmacked, um, based on what it was I'd shown her. And then, for some reason, she also proceeded to patronise me with this kind of brief lecture about having to be open-minded about what she called living in a multicultural society. Um, I took this as a roundabout inference that I was in some way being labelled a racist or Islamophobe. Um, and for what? Because I found a suitcase. Um, and if this is what she meant, she should have, of course, said multi-faith society, not multicultural society. Um, I kind of wanted to tell her, actually, I am very open-minded and have no problem with any other creed, cultures or faiths. In fact, one of my very best friends who I see every day is a Jill Bagwearing female devout Muslim. I held back from saying this because I was really concerned about just getting to work at this point. Um, but at the end of the day, I wasn't there to defend myself. I wasn't under arrest. Um, I was just a, a random member of the public trying to help her by reporting something. Um, but she clearly was in a rush, wanted to end the conversation and said, quote, what I, what I can do is give you a number to call at the council for refuse and fly tipping matters. Um, to summarise what the, the rest of that visit, what happened was she wrote down that number on a small piece of paper and thanked me for my time. Um, and I was just, yeah, like I say, absolutely shocked. Walking out of the police station... I just couldn't believe what I'd shown to her, described to her, she didn't think was suspicious. I just did not understand it. Not just because she dismissed um, what I'd shown her as not suspicious, but also because I knew GMP had definitely, at least previously, been looking for an item similar to, if not exactly the same as the one I'd shown and described to her, um, with all the details and the location of, etc. And then I started thinking about it, and I was in such disbelief at her genuity that, to be honest, over the course of the rest of that Monday, 
my opinion started to change and I was thinking about it from a different angle. Um, what's the thing that most helps a PCSO's career, kind of? Um, and I know you shouldn't be critical of the police because a lot of them are in it for the right reasons, but lots of them are power tripped as well. And that's just a fact. Um, so anyway, what's the, one of the very best things that will help a PSC, PCSO advance in their career? Um, I think it's a significant finding of some sort. It shows that they have the ability to then progress to be, you know, a police officer, constable, maybe then a detective. Um, and if that's handed to them on a plate, why would that police PCSO be content with sharing the credit for such a finding with some random member of the public? So, I could only assume, based on what I showed her, that she did in fact think it was suspicious and wanted the credit herself. And that's my honest opinion. Like, I didn't want to say it to her at the time, but when you've been told something by a police officer, you don't kind of question it, do you? Um, so I thought this was the end of the matter. But this was definitely not the case. In fact, this is where things started to get weird. Really, really weird. So, I'd found the case, or rather, my dog Luna had found the case on the Sunday. And the next Monday is when I, before work, um, stopped off at the police station and tried to report it. Um, was told it's not suspicious, it's just a fly tipping matter for the council. Um, so I think this is the end of the matter. Um, at least as far as I'm concerned. But then the next day, the Tuesday evening, the 11th of December, around 8pm, I get this out of the blue visit off to plainclothes police detectives, claiming to be from Tameside Police. Now, I'm not even sure I've ever been to Tameside. I didn't find the case in Tameside. I don't live in Tameside, so I don't know what all that's about. Um, and frankly, this was such a bizarre experience. They took me to the kitchen, where I live, sat me down and said they were conducting an investigation that may or may not be related to me. Um, naturally, I asked what it was about, and one of these officers, purported officers, which I later found out were officers, um, said she couldn't tell me anything more than it was concerning an identity issue. So at this point, point, I was like, what do you mean? Have you found out someone's been trying to steal my ident identity? And she's like, no, you don't need to be worried about anything like that. So I, then I was like, well, do you think I've been trying to steal someone's identity then? Because she said it's an identity issue. And at this point, she's like, no, all I can say at the moment is we don't suspect you of committing an offence, otherwise we'd have placed you under caution or under arrest. And similarly, we don't believe you've been the victim of any kind of identity-related offence. So, okay, at this point I'm thinking, you've just intimidated me into letting you into my home by flashing some sort of warrant card on the doorstep before going on to tell me that you're pretty much here for nothing, which has surely got any misuse of a warrant card. And they were really rude, these two officers. Um, I was half expecting them to start asking all questions about the case, uh, the suitcase, I should um, but to my surprise, they didn't at all. Um, they were belligerent, rude, and clearly just trying to intimidate me. For whatever reason, I have no idea. Um, but not wanting to appear uncooperative, I gave these two individuals a wealth of personal information about myself, including handing my physical passport over to them to take details from, giving my full name, the full names, dates of birth, and addresses of everyone in my family, every address I've ever lived at, even every school I've ever been to, right back, including primary schools. Uh, once they had all this information, they didn't give me any more details about why they were there, except I wasn't suspected of anything, and I hadn't been a victim of anything. Um, and like I said, they were quite rude throughout, um, and non-uniform, so they could have been fraudsters for all I know. Um, and my parents were sitting in the living room listening and were just as confused af uh, afterwards. They told me they were just as confused as I was um, and reminded me of everything that had been said, really, because I'd forgotten a lot of it. Um, so around an hour or so after they'd gone, 
around the non-emergency police number to check that it was a legitimate, a legitimate visit. And they were, in fact, police officers and not forested themselves. And it was confirmed to me quite quickly that it was a genuine police visit. So that was just a really, really strange experience. Um, and that bizarre visit was the best part of a year ago and I've heard nothing more of it except in a recent call to a different GMP officer about something else. Um, when I mentioned it and asked about it, she then told me she couldn't find any record of it on the system to even show the visit had taken place, which does seem quite ironic to me considering it was all about my identity on quite an analytical level. Um, yeah, just a really weird experience. So, you might be thinking, what exactly is suspicious, or do I think is suspicious, about the suitcase I found? Well, I've deliberated uploading the entire footage onto this video, or onto YouTube, so you can see for yourself, and everyone can make their mind up, whether they agree with me, or they agree with the police. But, as some aspects are, of it are, in my view, offensive and even potentially dangerous in the wrong hands. Um, I've decided to just add a few clips to a somewhat censored description of what I found. To be honest, it was mostly non-suspicious items, namely an empty sweet packet, a couple of books, one of which I nicked to read and still have somewhere, I think. Um, Good Friday by Linda... someone... Um, but it's a good read, a thriller, crime thriller. Um, yeah, so um, a sweet packet, a couple of books, one on something to do with Palestine that I wasn't interested in, one a novel, uh, Good Friday, which I nicked to read, because it was just going to be rotted away by detritivores if I didn't take it, let's be frank. Um, and the suitcase was clearly abandoned, um, not someone's possession, so I didn't feel bad taking the book. Um, so yeah, uh, a carrier bag for Internationale, um, whoever they might be. Um, a piece of kind of silky material, which I guess I'd say was probably some sort of prayer mat, due to its dimensions. And finally, an orange plastic ring binder. And it was what was in this ring binder that was really shocking to me. Um, although apparently not to the police officer, who dismissed finding a mixture of Islamic scripture, DIY weapon-making information, and details of a gay event as being closed-minded. Um, I might upload the full footage at some point in the future. I've not really decided yet. For now it's encrypted, and it's probably still far, far away from where I live, um, in case anyone wants it gone, let's say. Um, I think in conclusion, and it pains me to say this because there really, really are some nice police officers that I know, including ones in GMB, but what I've learned from this experience, specifically regarding police officers who work for Greater Manchester Police Force, is they're largely pugnacious, power tripped, and always just seem to want to behave antagonistically seemingly even when you're offering them help or potential information. Oh my god. What the fuck? 